Okay, so let's talk about designing a piece. I'm going to give you 10 uh, points for direct mail piece that have to be in every time. Now, you all get it, you're all my customers, so if you have done postcards with me, you know that you get a checklist to make sure these 10 points are in after we design your card. So let's go over it. You want to have a clear, bold headline. Here's another really bad card. The first thing I see, well, I don't know what to look at first because the eye trail on this card is just a mess because it's just four big boxes. But the, 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 the headline is Sunshine Ray Motors, which you should really never really make your name of your company the headline unless the name of your company explicitly says what you do or what problem you solve. So in this instant, this is a card that actually worked for a client of ours. Um, let us do the dirty work. Very clear, very bold headline. It's the first thing you see. Now, you also want a graphic image that supports the message or the headline. And this is, you know, when you first look at this card, and I'm sure this client looked at this and thought it looked great, but um, get your piece of the financial bailout. I, I'm sorry, that is just so general, and it's not even like a real communication, and then a credit card with a mousetrap. We're trying to get so clever. You never want to sacrifice clarity for to be clever. You never want to be so clever that nobody understands what you're doing. So this is an image of people actually cleaning. Let us do the dirty work, and that's clearly not you, that's them, so. And you want color that pops. You know, simple, you don't want too much copy on the front of the card, you want really good color that pops. This is not a very good example of a card because I see her face, but it's a nail salon. <coughs> All right, so right now we're doing simple colors, colors that pop. So let's look at the back of the card. So all you're trying to do with that front of the card is get them to turn it over. So once they turn it over, you need an, a subhead that leads into text. You want to get them to read the card and then eventually take action. So here we go. This is a subhead that leads into text. Welcome to a more affordable cleaning solution. Usually people who don't have a cleaning person the reason they don't have someone clean their house is they either love to clean themselves, how many of you fit that category, or they feel like they can't really afford it. And so by putting that, knowing that that's a button and putting that there right in the subhead um, is great. Now, the copy for your card, we have to talk about features and benefits. Sometimes you have to put features on your card, it's important, but most of the time what you want to do is take a feature and how can I turn that feature into a benefit? A benefit is what's in it for me as the consumer? What am I getting out of it? And here are just some examples and you'll see in the orange column is the uh, feature and then you'll see how we reworded it as a benefit. So most powerful floor cleaning system, it's a feature. Beautiful shiny floors in half the time. 24 hour, 24 seven, that's our service. We have appointments that, fill your, that fit your schedule. That's the benefit to the person. Very difficult to do, very difficult to do. We should have a, uh, a worksheet about this because even a seasoned copywriter has difficulty taking a feature and turning it into a benefit. It takes some skill, but you should be able to tell the difference. <clears throat> so here we have a list of benefits, benefits, benefits. And now an offer. An offer is super, super, super important. We want free stuff. Google is free. Wi-Fi at Starbucks is free. I mean, we get so much free stuff, we are now the entitlement generation where we just expect everything to be free and you should just give it to me because I want it. So you need to kind of roll with that and offer something for free, something of value, something of very high perceived value that is very low cost to you that will really make the person feel like you are giving them something so valuable that they want to at least give you their contact information. That's what we're going for. So they're going to give a free hour of cleaning with the purchase of four hours. It's, it's just something free, because I want something free. I don't, okay, this company is not giving me a free hour. You are, I'll go with you. Your company name and logo. Seems silly, but if you don't have a company name on your card, then they can't really identify you. They probably won't call. There, ABC Cleaning. A call to action. It's really funny, but it, it actually works on me 
So I'm assuming that it works on most people that if you tell me what to do in writing, I will do it. But if you leave it up to me to figure it out, I may not do it. So it's very simple to just put, make sure you put on there, call today, visit our website. Instead of just putting the website there or putting the phone number there, whatever you want them to do, tell them to do it. Call today. All right. If the phone number is too small, don't ever make someone look for the contact information. It's a small nuance, but don't make them look for it because it's just, it, it just lowers. What you're trying to do, you learned what the ARC triangle was this morning. What you're trying to do is build trust, build ARC. So you want to make the person like you more. There are these little nuances in the design of your card that will either make the recipient like you a bit more or like you a bit less. And all we're trying to do is get them to like you enough to go to your website, or call you, or buy from you online, or get a quote from you, or have a sit down with you. And that's what we're trying to do with the card. If you don't put a return address on your card, um, and it's undeliverable, it won't come back to you. So there's no return address on that card. Just wanna make sure you have one. Now, why would you, not want to just save some money and have two, just to share a postcard with another business, have two very distinct advertisements on one piece. Anybody have an idea why you wouldn't want to do that? Seems like a good idea. I just saved a bunch of money. You know what? The person won't do anything. They don't know what to look at. I'm not sure what to do. Should I call ABC Insurance or should I look at a new car? It's just too confusing. You want to sell one thing. Even if you sell many, many, many different products and services in your company, you only want to advertise one thing, mostly. You can, you can bullet point the other things that you do, but you really only want to advertise one thing.